I'm going to speak to you on uh, Isaac's sons, and then after we're going to progress into whatever the Lord wants. Amen. So if you look at the book of Genesis 26, 1 to 5, the Bible says there was famine in the land, and God gave Isaac a direction. I started there, and I said that Isaac went into the land of the Philistines where there was famine, and the Lord appeared to him and gave him a prophetic word to go down to Egypt, live in the land which I will tell you. And we know that I told you through seeking God, through prayer, this uh, upper room experience, walking in the power, reading the word, that we can hear the voice, get the clear direction to move out of famine. Somebody will move out of famine supernaturally. Amen. I, I don't believe in running a church or you being a church that you're going to stay in famine. If you took Isaac out of famine and I'm the seed of Abraham, I will not be in famine. You have to declare it. You have to speak it. You have to say it. Let me tell you something. God does not want to put famine on anybody. Remember this. This is of the devil. If, the, if, if you think that God wants to put famine on you, God never came to put famine on you. God came to give you health, healing, deliverance. He came. He died for this. So he's so serious. You don't think God is like this. If, 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 if you're my son, you do something wrong, I'm the father, when I put famine on you, do I want you to suffer? I don't want anybody in this church to suffer anything. So refuse anything in your spirit that comes out of the realm of the earth that tells you God is putting me through this problem. Amen. I, I don't want problems. How many of you like to welcome problem? Say problem. And if your name is problem, you can't come in my house. Amen. If he, if he come to do any work, he say my name is problem. Say sorry, I can't give you a job. Till you change your name, I'll give you a job. Amen. You might change your name too. Say, my name is Blessing. You can come and work in this house. So, the reason why I'm saying this is somebody, don't name your child problem and then all your life you got the problem. Name him Blessing. Amen. Blessing, I don't know, Blessing Pele or something. Because this is what it is about. Is that Isaac comes to a place where there's famine and what he does? He shifts. I declare today, somebody will shift out of famine in the name of Jesus. Somebody that is struggling with debt will come out of debt in the name of Jesus. Why? Say there's a covenant on my life. If you're sick in body, somebody is coming out of sickness. Why? He died for me. He bled on the cross and by his stripes I only declare one thing. I am healed. Even if the doctor said you're sick, uh, you are healed. Amen. And even if you're sick in the service right now, what must you say? I am healed. I will be healed. I'm, I'm, I'm walking in healing. Because why? Because he can't die and establish the covenant of prosperity, healing, deliverance, salvation, and all of these things. And then we still welcome it in our life. Never call anything negative over your life in the name of Jesus. Break this. Amen. Always understand. You have to understand that. Because Isaac come in a place of famine, and the Bible says that he dwells in the land and God gives him a prophetic word in verse 3. You know what the Lord said? The Lord said, Isaac, I will favor you with blessings. Man, what, what do you want to hear today? Is that Isaac is in famine. Everybody in poverty and in struggling and you're going through challenges and you can't do this and that. May the spiritual realm open today and may you hear the word, you are Isaac, son of Abraham, your daughter of Abraham. I will favor you with blessings. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen? Why? Because God wants to favor you with blessings. You see, let me show you what is negative faith. If you don't believe, you don't receive. There's a bottom line. If you believe your thinking is all skewed, you're going to never receive it. You see, it doesn't start with you getting it and working. And, no, 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 no. You know where it starts? It starts in your mind. Because whatever I believe, I can bring from the spiritual realm. You know, that's called faith. So when I believe that, listen, I'm in famine, I, I, I have a problem, I have a challenge, but you know what, God, just one drop of your favor will change my destiny. Just one drop of your favor will change my life. Lord, if you favor me today, I'm going to move to another level. So he said, listen, you'll decide, I'll give you the lands and I'll perform the oath which I swore to Abraham. Your father said, listen, don't worry about nothing. I'm about to perform an oath in your life. You know, everybody here is sitting here. Every one of you here. Can I tell you something? I never say it. This is not my word. God got an oath that he swore to your father Abraham. And he said, listen, 
In blessing, I will bless you. So I'm going to receive what God promised me. I'm not going to receive any opinion. Can, can, I, can I hear amen? It's not my opinion, because my opinion doesn't matter to you. It is what God says. That's why I always say, hear the voice of God. Look at the word of God. Why? Because whatever you call in the spirit, you receive. And whatever you believe, you get it for free. So don't believe the wrong things. Begin to say, when you're going through challenges, there's an oath on my life, ratified in the blood. There is a challenge in my life, but yes, I believe there is an oath on my life. And what does that say? I will receive something from God today that is supernatural. I will receive the favor. I will receive the blessings. Things look bad, Isaac, but what you say? God saying, Isaac, I want to remind you of something, Isaac. I made a covenant with your father. Things don't look, I made a covenant, Isaac. Stop thinking like that. Change your thought pattern. I'm telling you, I made a covenant with your father that I have to favor you and bless you in the season. So every Isaac, I will tell you something. You are the seed of Abraham. Whether you like it, whether you don't like it, whether you believe it or not believe it, I want to say this. God made the oath with you. He made it with you, but if you don't believe it, you don't receive it. So he says, I'm not saying I just made the oath, but he said, I'm about to perform. Believe that word, and I will perform the oath. May the grace locate you that God is about to perform something in your life you never thought it can be done. The impossible is about to manifest and become possible. The God that is able to perform the supernatural and the miraculous will take you out of every famine. I rebuke famine. I curse poverty today. I've come to deal with that spirit of poverty and say to poverty, you have no right to be in this church, no right to be in any believer. You have no right to keep them in bondage, to keep them under oppression, to keep them in a place of depression. I declare to every demon spirit of poverty, you have no place in this church in the name of Jesus. Why? I read something today. There's a contract on my life. And that contract is God will perform the oath he swore to Abraham. He said, I will give you all these lands. Let's move to the next verse. He says, and I will make your descendants mul multiply you as the stars of the heaven. Now, when he says, I will multiply your descendants to multiply, multiply as the stars of heaven, and I will give to, the, to your posterity all these lands, kingdoms, by offering shall all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Or by him bless themselves. Now, you must understand why. You remember God said, Abraham, listen, as the stars in the sky, in the sand, on the seashore. He talks about the boat. He always compares that. And whenever I talk to you, I always talk about Phoenix, because we are in Phoenix. Now, do you know why God spoke to Abraham about stars? I know here in Phoenix, if you hit somebody with a baseball bat, they will see stars. <laughs> this, that's a different context altogether. But Abraham, he used to live in outdoor. He had tents. They always sat outside. So he referenced stars. They looked up. He said, as the stars, I remember, you can see the stars. Why dust? Well, they didn't have uh, Crockett and Jones and all that shoes in those days. They were using sandals. So, so, so every single day, Abraham went home. He had to clean his sandals and he could see the dust on his sandals every day. He was cleaning his sandals. So he said, he used the dust because he couldn't count the particles. He used the stars. He couldn't count the stars. But he said, Abraham, this is how I'm going to bless your descendants. He said, this is how I'm going to do it for you. He said, the dust and the stars. Look at it, Abraham. One day, this is about to happen to you. You know, if in a normal mind, you think, man, how in the world will this such a thing happen to me? Because it's like beyond my uh, imagination. But I come to tell you today, if you can only alter your imagination and see with the eyes of your spirit, you're going to get something supernatural. You see, the enemy wants to flash before you all the bad things. Your imagination. But we must cast down every imagination that does not represent God and get the imagination of God in our minds. Because why? If you cannot have the right imagination, you cannot receive what God wants you to have. Because if you're always imagining bad things, how are you going to get the good things? Stop imagining bad in order to open the door for the supernatural. So he wanted to alter Abraham's imagination. He said, listen, look at the stars. Look at the dust on your sandals. And I'm telling you, when you change your imagination and your perception, things will begin to shift. So he just tells him, and Abraham listened uh, and obeyed the Lord and kept the charge of his commandments, statutes and laws. So I spoke some things about that, and then we said, listen, God said, you'll multiply your descendants and all of those things. And we're going now to the part where Abraham's covenant, I just want to talk a little bit about Abraham's covenant. And you know, the, 
This is what happened in Abraham's covenant. In Abraham's covenant, the Bible says that Genesis 22, 10. Now God called Abraham, and Abraham stretched forth his hand and took hold of the knife to slay his son. And when Abraham took hold of the knife to slay his son, the Bible says the angel of the Lord called, called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he answered, Yet am I. Yea, I am. Let's move on. And the Bible says, said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For, I, for now I know that, you're, that you fear and revere God, since you have not held back from me or be, begrudged giving me your son, your only son. So God spoke to Abraham. Now, the first thing about verse 10, it says that Abraham took the knife and he was willing to slay his son. See, Abraham's willingness to sacrifice his son Isaac symbolizes the planting of a seed of faith. Think about it. He, he was acting on God's command. But Abraham was sowing to a, another level in his life. He trusted God, he obeyed God, and he expected God's promises to be fulfilled. He was able to see the impossible even when he was slaying his son. God said, put your Isaac on the altar. But even when he was doing this, it was faith. What level of faith can you believe God and trust God? Because why? His obedience. Then he went on to say the angel intervened. It is it is genuinely an intervention for the germination of the seed of Abraham. When he planted Isaac, his own son, the voice of the Lord said, stop the sacrifice because God acknowledged your faithfulness. There are people here that have been faithful for many years to the church. You stood with the church, you prayed, you did all of these things. Let me say this. Men may not acknowledge your faithfulness, but I give you one guarantee. Whatever you did for the kingdom, God acknowledges your faithfulness. Amen. Hallelujah. So give yourself a praise offering today for the Lord. Amen. Because God acknowledges your faithfulness. And so you know, when you do anything and you're doing it for God, God will acknowledge your faithfulness. Why? He is a faithful God. And so he says, don't lay your hand on the child. And he says, listen, uh, you never held your son back uh, from me. And so God's command and recognition for your life and what you are doing is important. Why? As we obey his commands and we recognize him and we understand that what we are doing, we are not doing for ourselves. We are not doing because we are ambitious. We must always remember whatever I am doing in this church or wherever you are doing it for the kingdom, I am doing it for only one person and that is God. Every sacrifice, everything I do, I do it for God. That's how, that's how we must think. Why? Because who is going to see our faithfulness? Only God. So God said to Abraham, listen, I'm about to provide relief for you. What he, what he meant, say, listen, Abraham, I know Isaac is there, it pains your heart and all of things, but I'm about to take you to another level. That means I'm going to relieve you of sacrificing your son and I'm about to provide for you a supernatural lamb that is going to be caught in the ticket. Can I talk to somebody that has been sacrificing, that has been faithful, that has been committed, that has been dedicated? Get ready because there's a lamb about to be caught in the ticket. There's a supernatural provision coming to somebody that has been faithful. If you've been faithful, God is about to tell you, I have seen your sacrifice, you're committed to what I'm doing, and I want to say today that don't even worry. God is going to water and tender the seed of faith and allow it to grow and prosper. Whatever is sown, this is a season for God to grow and prosper whatever you have sown in the kingdom of God. Whether people may see it and man may not see it, but I'm telling you the sacrifice that you have made, God is about to acknowledge it. Don't think whatever you are doing. It's not acknowledged. I guarantee you something. It is acknowledged today. And today is the day your seed is about to grow. Come on. I want to sell to somebody whatever you have done. Your, your seed is about to grow. And so, Abraham, you know, he was a good man. The Bible said, and Abraham looked in, in verse 13, looked up and he glanced around and viewed. Behind him was a ram caught in the ticket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering and an, exceed, an ascending sacrifice instead of his son. You see, the provision of the lamb tells us something. That God cares about you and me. God cares about us. You see, the Abraham, when, when he just trusted God, he obeyed God, he sowed the seed. Let me say, it has it, it now taken him 
to another level of provision. Why? Because look at what 14 says. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. And, and it is said to this day on, on the mount of the Lord it will be provided. What am I saying to you today? When you have seed faith, God can provide. Generations will witness the, what God has done in the life of Abraham and in your life. Come on, I want to say today that anybody that is here that is trusting God for a miracle, I have to come and prophesy to you, it's time for the harvest to manifest. It is time for the harvest to manifest. It is time for your season to change. Why? I've been a faithful Christian. So listen, if you find people getting blessed, don't be sad. Do you know why? It's the harvest manifesting. What you must say, but God, one day, my harvest is about to manifest. One day, because why? The same God they serving, Jehovah Jireh, their provider that did it for Abraham, is about to do it for somebody this morning in this church and change your life forever. Because let me tell you something, the ram caught in the ticket can be somebody giving you a business caught in the ticket, can this contract, can be somebody giving you a business, can be somebody opening a door, somebody creating an opportunity for you, somebody speaking on your behalf, because this is what favor can do, it can open a door when we can't open it, this is what blessing can do, it can bring a ram out of nowhere into the ticket, in the mighty name of Jesus, this is what God's power can do for his people. Somebody can get it today. That's why I'm saying to you, get ready. Your harvest is about to manifest in the mighty name of Jesus. There are people that are sad when other people get blessed. But I come to tell you, whether they like it or don't like it, it's your season to reap your harvest because you have been faithful. My faithfulness will manifest. See, let's look at Isaac and he was in famine. But in Genesis 26, 12. The Bible says that Isaac sowed seed in the land and received in the same year a hundred times as much as he had planted. And the Lord favored him with blessings. See, watch this. When God favored him and blessed him, Isaac sowed seed in one year and received a hundredfold. You never take ten years. When there's a difference when favor and blessing is on you and you're sowing. Because when he sowed seed under favor and blessing, the Bible says he received a hundred times. Do you know what that is? A hundred percent return. Double your money in BWC supernaturally because the God of favor and blessing is here. Now people can't understand this, but I come to tell somebody today that Isaac planted crops in the land in the same way. He harvested a hundredfold. The Lord blessed him. A hundredfold is a metaphor for an exceedingly fruitful harvest symbolizing God's blessings in, in Isaac's life and a success in his life. I'm telling you something. When you're under the anointing of success, when you're under the anointing of favor, when you're under the anointing of blessings, multiplication will be your portion. Listen, it's not good how good we are in business. It's not how good we are in our own strength. But I want to say something. Favor gives you an advantage. Maybe you may be disadvantaged, but if favor locates you, you're going to come into another realm. The Bible says he's sold. He's sold by faith. He don't know what's going to happen. Let me tell you, there was famine in the land. There was no rain. That means the crop had no opportunity to bear, bear fruit. But what happened? Because God's favor was upon him, that God made the seed to grow. I'm telling you something. That is not we can grow the seed. A seed is what God can grow. And today I pray every seed you sown that God will grow your seed supernaturally. By the end of this year, you can say like Isaac, and God multiplied and favored me with blessings that I have now moved from nothing to a hundredfold. In the name of Jesus. A hundredfold. You see, when I'm preaching on finances, all those that are sleeping, let me say this. That's why your finances are affected. No, see this. Because the demon just made you sleep. Serious. You're not joking. You don't want to hear this. Because why? I'm telling you something. I can sow a seed and I can reap a hundredfold in one year. In the name of Jesus. When fever locates you, you can reap a hundred times. Say, listen to this. Hundred times? How many of you like a hundred times blessing? How many of you want to be multiplied a hundred times? You see, then you need to overcome. And believe what God say. Not what the devil say. If the devil say, listen, 
you need to be poor i'm and, and you think in your mind god is making you poor then you'll be poor imagine what a bad thing that let's say if you believe god made you poor and the word says god made you rich where that came from that's a lie and deception if god said you are prosperous and you believing you must be poor i don't think that i say man everybody in this church will be rich and blessed I don't care where you are now. I'm telling you, you're coming out of famine. Because why? I'm not, I don't want your family to struggle. You hear what I'm saying? Why I'm preaching? Because why? I got seed in the ground. The business look bad. The things look bad. Everything look bad. But I got seed in the ground. Come on. I'm telling you something. I don't care what's happening around me. Circumstantially, it looks bad. Hey, brand new. Circumstance. But what am I saying? Hey, no matter what the circumstances, I believe in the word of the Lord and I don't stand upon my own intellect. I stand upon the promises of the word. And if his word said that favor and blessings will locate me in the midst of it, then I receive it. I'm not going to think about it. I'm going to say, Lord, thank you. I may be in this situation now, but never again. Because, Lord, you are the provider. He's talking today to somebody. He says, Isaac sowed in the same year, receive a hundredfold. I prophesy over every one of you. Whatever you have sown in the kingdom, it's time for you to reap a hundredfold return in the name of Jesus. You see, what I believe is what I receive. I can't go beyond my thinking. What's this? What's the next thing I'm going to say? It says, what's 13? He said, now, and the man became great and, and gained more and more until he became very wealthy and distinguished. And we're talking about a season of famine now. It's like in the time of COVID. Famine, COVID. People are not working. And things are happening. But the Bible says that Isaac, when favor is on you, I'm not worried about COVID or no COVID. I'm not worried about what the economy says, what the government says, what the people say, what anybody say. I, don't worry about that. Because why? When faith is upon you, the man became great. Hello. He became great. He gained more and more until he became very wealthy and distinguished. Don't get jealous if somebody become wealthy in the church. You know why? Who made them wealthy? God. Who can make you wealthy? God. You know what people think? That's why. I can't be in a church where the pastor preached poverty. Because God said, hey, listen, I'm going to make you wealthy. Some people get jealous over other people that get wealthy. And some people say, hey, but why should we believe in having the best? Hey, my God is the best. Yeah. What are you saying? You say that every person out there that does not serve him need to have the best and you need to have nothing. Change your thinking. If you say you serve God, then I'm going to reflect God in everything that I own. I'm going to show forth the glory of God. I'm going to, and I, maybe now you don't have it, but tell somebody, it is coming. I'll always share my testimony when I told somebody when I was very young. I had so much of faith. I had such an old car. I said, man. And I tell you, before Jesus, I had such an old car. I man, this car got stuck. No broke down, what you call it, I don't know. So people were looking at me and saying, man, you look at me. I said, man, but you know one thing was, I was full of the Holy Spirit. I was really full of, I said, man, guys, one day you will see the Lord bless me with a good car. I said, one that day will come. You know what I said? Because why? I had such an old car. And for them, like, it was a ridicule because why? Hey, you serving God, you're talking in tongues, you, you're saying this, you're saying that. But hey, listen. I said, one day is one day. Can I say something to you? The day have to come when God will bless you. One day is one day. I don't care where you are now. I, all I can care about is saying that if you can see it in the spirit today, then God will provide. If you can see it in the spirit today, then God will bless you. If you can see it in the spirit today, then God will make a way where there seems to be no way. I'm not asking you to have money to buy things. I'm not asking you to worry about what you got in your bank. All I'm telling you today is Isaac was great because he had a covenant on his life and you have the same covenant on your life. That means you can be wealthy, you can be great, you can become more and more wealthy and distinguished. Can I talk to distinguished people that are receiving favor today in the house of God? You are receiving favor so God can make you great, so God can make you wealthy, so God can make you distinguished. And I pray today that every family will receive the grace for wealth in this house today. You may be not there yet, but somebody call it and say, If you did it for Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and I'm Christ's seed and I'm part of the covenant. Then Lord, today I declare I will be wealthy and distinguished in the earth in the mighty name of Jesus. 
And I said, I don't worry about people who think, don't think this. And some people will say, no. Because I say, man, you keep thinking that. And I'll show you what the Lord can do. Because why? My feet will open the door. Even if you've got nothing, my feet will create the opportunities. My fever will cause my seed to multiply. You know what? If you believe it, you stay. It, you stand upon the promise of God. You see, if it is my promise, it will. I, I, I don't know what you're going to do. But it's not my promise. It is what God said. That God will provide. What's this? He goes on to say, he moved to another level. Oh, when, he, when he moved, he became wealthy and he said, you own flocks, you own herds, and a great supply of servants. And the Philistines envied him. Come on, where does this demon of envy come from? I, I'll tell you something. There are some people in the kingdom only worry about what other people got. You know what this is? Envy, man. I can tell you. These people, they are demon possessed. Hear me. Don't worry about what the demon possessed are saying. Think about what the Lord promised you. Because when you get blessed, I'll tell you something. Uh, the Philistine spirit said, no, no, no. How can you have that? Hey, you can have everything God said you can have. I'm here to tell you something. Don't worry about how much the devil envy you. You become greater. You become more wealthier. You become more distinguished. You rise higher because I'm your spiritual father. And I believe that. I declare the anointing upon you. That provision is going to come in your life. Your money is going to multiply a hundredfold. Your business is going to multiply a hundredfold. You have one shop. You're going to have a hundred shops. You have one. one. I'll tell you something. I don't care what the devil says because I believe in hundred. I believe in multiplication. I believe in the overflow. I don't want you to work somewhere. Get a small Suddenly people abuse you all the time, put you down, teach you like a slave. You are a kingdom son. You are a kingdom daughter. You become the owner. This is my dream for the people of God. You become the entrepreneur of the organization. See what he said? He said he owned flocks. Come on, he was. He came here in famine. He came to the Philistine country in famine. He had nothing. You see, he's like, you can have nothing and come to the country. But when you, when you finish up there, you're going to have everything. He says now, he's the owner of flocks. He had no flocks, but he became the owner. Why? Grace multiplied in your life today can make you the owner. Can I talk to owners in the place? You are in a foreign land, but you become the owner. He said, now he says, now he hurts. And a great supply of servants. Oh, man, he had no servants. He came here. He said, man, I'm only just a worker. I'm just, but I come to tell you something. Now he had a great, you know, not one, two trickles. He had a great supply of servants. The man was, uh, was raised up in a Philistine country. I want to reverse the order of something in the house today. I want to say today, if you're working for a corrupted boss and you are a slave and a servant to that company, the order is about to change. Isaac came in uh, as a humble man, had nothing, but then he had the servants. Uh, the ones that are persecuting you, the ones that are saying to you that you might be the slave and the servant, I turn it around in the spirit today. From today, you will not be a servant. Uh, you're going to become the owner. I don't know what, maybe I'm just saying it in the spirit, but I heard something about, about the covenant. Uh, it has favor and blessings. It can take you out of slavery and servitude. Uh, uh, I'm not saying servitude in the kingdom, but as being a servant uh, out there in the, in the marketplace, and, and make you into the owner. Can I talk to somebody that your flocks are going to come, your herds are going to come, you're going to have a great supply of servants and the Philistines may envy you, but they can't do nothing about what God has given to you. Think about it. God gave you an anointing. Ah, people are so sad. Why? You're anointed. Uh, you go to work, you speak in tongues. They say, what is this foreign language? They look at you and say, man, how come you're always happy? How come the joy is in you? How come the peace is in you? How come you, are, you, 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 you think differently? You talk differently? You know why? Because one thing for sure, you are anointed. You go through the storm, you're still excited. Why? You're anointed. You go through anything, you're still excited. Why? You're anointed. Uh, the Philistines don't like that. When you're so happy and they're so sad, ah, no, talk bad, negative. Are you there? Because when you're anointed, you're blessed. So you, some demons may envy you, but get ready, they can't do anything to you. Let's go to the next verse. He said, now, now this happened now. The wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines had closed and filled with earth. Now, you see what the Philistines did? Abraham dug wells and there was a flow of water. I mean, you know, water brings life and water can cause flocks to multiply and give you great things. In some countries where there's 
water. I think the Zimbizi River is such a powerful river. And they say that it produces hydroelectrical currents. So here the country will never have a shortage of electricity like load shedding. Because why? The powerful river, like the river Nile, runs through it. The powerful river is power because the river has power. You know, there's growth, there's vegetation along the banks of the river. The, the fish is there. Everything is there because why? It's a river. And so the Bible says that one of the things the Philistines said is that they clogged the wells of Abraham. Now, why do you think there's famine in the land? Because they thought, no, let's clog Abraham's well. There'll be famine. You see, as long as Abraham is dead, it's going to be fruitfulness. But they clogged the wells of Abraham. So what happened was this, that uh, the Philistines closed the filled earth, and Abimelech said to Isaac, look at this, what the king said, go away from us. You are much mightier than we are. My God. When you step into a season, man, the king brought him in. Oh, dwell with us. You know, there's so much of famine. No, come, welcome. For the sand, we envy his flocks were moving. Why? Said, not because Isaac was good. He was just faithful to God. It's because favor and blessing located him. Imagine the king. The president call you. And I pray this will happen in South Africa. The president will call you and say, man, what happened to this church? He says, now you became so big and mighty. Watch what the Lord has done. You know, this church will grow in leaps and bounds. And thousands will come to this house. Let me tell you why. It is because God's favor and blessing is here. So what am I saying? So, so everybody said to Isaac, he said, Isaac, go away from us. You are much mightier than we are. My God. The king is shocked. The king is shaken. The king is running for his life. The king is surprised. May the wealth locate the people of the house. So supernaturally that businesses will be terrified of you. I oh, may locate the church that other churches can become terrified of us. Why? Because God's favor and blessing is here. They say, Man, but you are so mighty ministry in this country, Durban, and this nation. What has happened? What has the Lord done? Let me tell you, when God puts his favor and blessing on a ministry, you become a giant ministry. I don't care what the devil say, how the Philistines envy, how they try to shoot down, talk negative, lie, all those things. I come to tell you, look and behold what will happen to this ministry in the next couple of years and watch what the Lord will do. Why? Because favor locates us. That's why when I set a conference, I bring an anointed man. Why? Because why? It is through the anointing. Favor will locate you. It is through the anointing. Favor will bless you. Why? Why do we sow in the conference? Because Isaac sowed. We sow because in that anointing, I always say, you, only when the preacher comes, you sow. Because why? I learned this a long time ago. When I'm sowing into this anointing, then I'm drinking from what the Lord wants. Why? It can multiply. I've seen many times that the things multiply supernaturally. He said, if you sow seed, he said, I will give back to you. That means if you sow, I will reap. If I, if I give, I will multiply your resources for sowing. Read Second Corinthians. I will multiply, I will multiply. If that multiplication anointing gets you today, that's why he said, I'll multiply you, I, Abraham. Stars in the sky, sand on the seashore. Why? He was saying, man, if the multiplication anointing locates somebody here today, no matter what situation you may be facing, you'll become mightier than the president. You have to believe these things. That you may discover something, you open something in a corporate company, you just, or, or just open a small company, it becomes corporate, national, they go global, supernatural. This is normal. You see, but if I don't believe, I can't get it. But somebody altered my thinking. They said, no, you must be like this. When you go to heaven, the Lord will say, you had a bestseller inside of you, you never wrote the book. How sad that will be. Because why? Believe in what God promised you. Believe in what God spoke over you. Make sure you know who's your source. It is God. So, what's this? so Isaac went to him. Isaac went away. He had to go away. He was so mighty, the king got worried. Isaac went away from there. He pitched a tent in and dwelt there. And so Isaac dug wells of water in the days of Abraham's father. And the Philistines stopped them after the death of Abraham. Again, and then he gave names of his father. He gave, he gave them by the name by which his father called him. And then Isaac dug. Then, now Isaac's servant dug a well, dug in the valley and found Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found there was a well of living spring water. 
So when Isaac dug in this well, let me show you something very important to understand this. When Isaac dug this, this well, I want to say that the Philistines came to him and started to cause a problem. See, Isaac dug the well of water, and the Philistines stopped him after the river, and, he, and the Isaac, when he dug the well, the Philistines came to cause a problem. And listen, in verse 20, and the herdsmen of Gerah quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, the water is ours, and the name of the well was called Isaac Contention, because they, what did it? They quarreled with him. Look at this. I was the husbands begin to argue, and they were, the place was called, because it's known as a place of dispute and contention. It suggests that Isaac's attempt to avoid conflict tension still followed him there because they were quarreling over the well. Seven convention, what it does, it caught the well. Look at this. It's a contention. They quarreled with him, and their servants dug another well, and they quarreled over that also. What's it? They quarreled over that also, a sitna, enmity. So either one well, they had a problem. They had another well, there's a problem. Then what happens? And he moved away from there and dug another well. And then, and for that one, they did not quarrel. You see, church? You maybe had the first business. There was a problem. Second business, there was a problem. But there comes a time when all quarreling stops. When all contention stop, when all strife stop, when all envy stop, the Bible says now he dug a well and the Philistines could not stop him. You see, church, whenever you're going through challenges and trials in your life, because of what the covenant has spoken, you dig the first well. It didn't work out. You dig the second well, it didn't work out. You dig the third well. You see, when the grace is on you, no matter who do what to you, when you dig, it will flow. Why? I'm anointed there. When you dig, it will flow. That means it can be the first problem. You enter the second problem. You are not. But I come to tell somebody, no matter where you go and what you do, as long as the favor is on you, you can keep digging and it will flow. Can I talk to people in the house of God that is going to dig some wells in some different locations in Phoenix, maybe anywhere else, because I've come to tell somebody today that everywhere you go, because you're anointed, there's a covenant on your life, there's a blessing on your life, there's a power on your life, that means wherever you go, i come to tell you, you may dig and they may shout at you, and they may try to stop you, they may try to talk bad about you, they may try to put you down and lie about you, but i come to tell you today, that no matter what the lie of the devil is, uh, get ready to church. Uh, you are about to dig a well that's going to bring you peace, joy and happiness and no weapon formed against you shall prosper. What did I come to say? You are about to dig a well where there will be no more warfare. There will be no more demons in that well. There will be no more strife in that well. There will be no more contention. I come to tell you he named it Rehoboth which means room. Sing for now the Lord has made room for us. Can I talk to ten people that God is about to make room for you. I don't know who I came to talk to, but somebody, get ready, because I know the God that is about to make room for you. Can I call Rehoboth uh, today in the house? Uh, no more strife, uh, no more contention, but peace, uh, joy, because this time, God is fighting for you. Uh, God is pushing back uh, the darkness. Uh, God is doing something supernatural. What am I saying today? We shall build in the fruitful land. And, uh, they came to the land uh, where there was only fruitfulness. Uh, if you look at a tree, it is known by its fruit. Uh, we can't talk if we have got no fruit. Uh, but God said, Rehoboam, the place uh, of fruitfulness and no quarreling. Uh, may you come into your season of fruitfulness uh, and no quarreling. May the Lord make room for you. You know, when he spoke about the tithing covenant, he said something. He said something about the room. He said there'll be no room to contain it. Don't get jealous if somebody moves forward and they have no room to contain it. Let me tell you something. Only the fullest times will envy them. But I come to tell somebody today, you're about to enter the dimension where there will be no room to contain it. Say there will be no room to contain it. That's why I say something. God can make a room uh, where there's no room to contain it. Uh, you come to the place uh, where there is no more quarreling. Let me explain this and close. 
You see, it came to Rehoboth. Let me say what Rehoboth symbolizes. Rehoboth means room or broad places. It can represent provision. In the in a desert region, water is a symbol of sustenance and provision. Finding water in Rehoboth signifies that Isaac's family and his livestock would have the basic needs for survival. It is a confirmation of divine provision amidst the opposition that they faced in the past. The Bible says this was a place. Imagine if there's no water. They taught man Isaac became great. He got herds. He got flocks. He, had, he, had to, he needed water. So what they taught? If you cut off the water supply, like what they're doing to you now, if we cut the water supply off, what will happen? The flocks cannot drink water. What will happen? Death. They thought they can affect his blessing by cutting off the water supply. So the first well, they said no. The second well, they said no. But they didn't know one thing for sure, that God was on his side. Wherever he put the pick and he dug, or wherever he drilled, water is coming out. Why? He's anointed and there's a covenant on his life. That's why they didn't know that. They thought, no, no, we get rid of him. We can kill him. How can we, how can we destroy all that God bless him, wealth and distinguish. He said, no, cut off the water supply. It makes sense. Cut off the water supply. You can destroy a lot of businesses in this country because people can't work where there's no water. People can't even flush the toilet where there's no water. So what is it? Cut off the water supply. Herds and flocks depend on the water. So what happened? They said, cut it off. And when they started to cut it off, let me say this, uh, they thought it was over. But I'll tell you something, when you are a child of God, uh, you'll never be over. You can cut one supply, I'll dig another well. You can try to put me down, I'll pick myself up. You can try to destroy me, I'll come up on top. Why? Because I'm serving the God of covenant. Can I talk to people here today? He said, listen, the first thing I want you to know, the previous well I think Doug was a source of dispute. But however, they saw this Rehoboth symbolizing peace, peaceful resolution, and the end of conflict. Because God made room for this one. The Bible says he came to a place, Rehoboth, the room meaning signifying a place where Isaac had to, had to, uh, was a place where he could live without strife. How nice to live in a church where there's no strife. Come on. The water is a metaphor for tranquility. An environment where Isaac and his household could live and thrive. How nice to live in there is no strife. There is peace. Everybody is speaking in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Hello. This is the house God wants to create in Bethesda Worship Center. This morning, strife, no strife, no peace, love, and unity. Hello, some people don't like what I'm saying. Because why? Maybe you're envious. But this church, there will be peace. Because the Prince of Peace is there. Are you there? Let me say this. Divine blessing. Rehoboth was seen as a blessing from God. A sign of the presence and favor of God. You see, the well represented God's promise to Isaac. To bless him. Multiply his, to his offering for his father's sake. Why? He made a covenant. Rehoboth was the opportunity for people to grow. That means a plentiful water at Rehoboth enabled Isaac to expand his agricultural activities. Can you imagine? They thought the water is over, but this symbolizes opportunities upon opportunities for prosperity and the capacity of Isaac's family and wealth begin to grow, this time, without hindrance. May you come to the place ha, where there will be no more fighting. That means, no, no, I'm, no, not in the church, no more fighting. And also, no more demon fighting you. No more spirit fighting you for your wealth. No more evil pushing you back. Where there's no more interest. May you come to the place for opportunity and growth. Where every demon knows that you are the seed of Abraham. That Christ lives in you. That the blood is upon your head. That if you want to fight you, he has to give up. Why? Because there's a covenant on your life. And God is fighting for you. That you will come to a place where God has made room for you as a children of God. That this time around, I don't care what the economy looks like i don't care what the country looks like all i want to say that god is going to make room for his children in the midst of whatever is happening i come to tell somebody that you will be a fruitful land in the season you will become wealthy you'll become distinguished and you will grow and become 
all that God has intended for you in the season. Can somebody give the Lord a praise? <laughs>